In second century Rome, there were no black swans. No one in Western Europe had seen anything other than a white swan. It was just assumed black swans didn't exist. And so when a Roman poet described something as a rare bird in the lands and very much like a black swan, he didn't mean black swans were rare birds. He meant they were impossible. This became a common saying and generally referred to things that just could not happen. But then black swans actually happened. In 1697, over a thousand years after a Roman declared them impossible, Dutch explorers in Australia stumbled upon black swans. Lots of them. This is in itself a black swan event. Maybe the first official black swan event. A black swan event is an event so rare and unusual that its appearance takes us by complete surprise. They can be disasters like a financial crash, or great scientific advancements, or the discovery of a flock of black birds. Either way, they are unprecedented and unpredictable, at least until they happen. For something to be classified as a black swan event, it needs to fulfill three requirements. It has to be an outlier. That is, it is outside the realm of our expectation. It is a surprise. It has to have a major effect. And in hindsight, it actually is predictable. We can pinpoint and study the chain of events that led to the creation of the black swan. In other words, it isn't just random. The 9-11 attacks were a black swan event. The 2008 financial crisis was a black swan event. World War I, the collapse of the Soviet Union, the rise of the internet, the 2004 Indonesian tsunami, all black swans. Human history is full of black swan events. Even things that didn't happen but we were sure would happen can be considered a black swan event because the absence of an event can be just as significant or catastrophic as something that does happen. But not every disaster is a black swan. The COVID-19 pandemic is not a black swan event. Scientists and experts have been predicting it for years. We knew it would happen someday, just not when. This is what we call a white swan event. A white swan event is a highly probable event with huge but predictable consequences. An asteroid impact would also be a white swan event, as well as nuclear war. There are also gray swans. Like the name suggests, these events lie somewhere in between black swans and white swans. They are somewhat improbable with hard to define or chaotic impacts. Brexit could be considered a gray swan event, as well as the election of Donald Trump. Both of these were a surprising and unusual turn of events, but they weren't hard to predict, as say the 1929 financial crash. But there can be events that are highly predictable, disasters that we know will happen, but we ignore them. These are what we call gray rhinos. Gray rhinos are known threats we do nothing to stop. Climate change is a big example of a gray rhino. Some say the 2008 housing crisis was more of a gray rhino than a black swan, but there tends to be some overlap between all these swans and rhinos. One person's black swan might be another's gray rhino. Other metaphors cover the same turf as these swans and rhinos. There's the idea of the perfect storm. This was popularized by the book and subsequent major motion picture starring George Clooney, The Perfect Storm. In 1991, a rare confluence of meteorological phenomenon over the eastern seaboard formed an unexpected and particularly devastating storm. Hence, the perfect storm. Perfect storms have now come to mean any event that is born out of an unusual alignment of typically well-understood circumstances that lead to an unpredictable and catastrophic outcome. So a couple routine storms coming together to form a monster one. And speaking of monsters, the Dragon King is another black swan-like event, and my personal favorite. As its name implies, it involves two particular characteristics. One, it is a king, meaning it is an outlier that is above and beyond anything we experience in our day-to-day -day lives. It is off the map, hence the dragon in its name. Just as old maps would have the phrase, here be dragons, on parts of that map that were incomplete or unknown, Dragon kings inhabit a world that we have little to no knowledge of. As the late Donald Rumsfeld would say, dragon kings are true unknown unknowns. And like a dragon, they are large and destructive. To understand what exactly a dragon king looks like, it's helpful to think of a pot of water on a burner. The water slowly heats up until there is an abrupt change, a phase transition. The water suddenly turns from liquid into a gas. What was once a still pot of water is now chaotic and boiling. Now, imagine we didn't know that was gonna happen. That's a Dragon King event, albeit on a very small scale. This all boils down to the limits of our knowledge, which can vary from person to person. And that's exactly what was going on with the Dutch explorers when they discovered black swans. They had never seen black swans, so they thought they were impossible. Then they found some and their whole notion of what was possible was overturned. But black swans aren't rare. 
They're just not from Europe. In Australia, black swans are common. They have a large range, and today introduced populations of black swans can be found in New Zealand, the UK, China, Japan, and the United States. But its association with evil or calamity, much like black cats, might have kept these birds from getting a foothold in continental Europe. Outside their natural habitat, black swans can be found on flags, coats of arms, stamps, coins, and soccer teams. They form an important part of Aboriginal culture. In the lore of the younger people of Southwest Australia, humans used to be black swans. And it's hard to think of a bigger black swan event in the history of planet Earth than the arrival of Homo sapiens. But for those people who have lived alongside black swans for thousands of years, a black swan event would be nothing more than an everyday phenomenon. Something that happens all the time. So whether we're talking about swans or rhinos or dragons, what we're actually talking about are metaphors and how they can be tools to help us understand complex ideas. If we can understand a problem, maybe even see it before it becomes a problem, maybe we can do something about it. Special thanks to our Patreon patrons. Without you, the good stuff just wouldn't happen. So if you like what we do here, go on over to patreon.com slash thegoodstuff and become a supporter. Otherwise, you can like and subscribe to this channel, hit the notification bell so you know when the next video is coming out, and I'll be back in a couple weeks with a new video. Thanks for watching.